Welcome back to the latest aviation news recap to air here on the YouTube channel. At the moment, I'm currently out of office, relocating back to Australia, having just attended the final Boeing 747 delivery event in Seattle. So with that being said, regular content production is something I've not been able to do. So these are pre-recorded aviation news recaps taken from the DJ's aviation website to give you a little insight on what's been happening in our industry on topics that maybe wouldn't ordinarily get their own separate video. Today's coverage goes from Swiss to Virgin Atlantic to Qantas and more, so make sure you're staying tuned for what's to come. Swiss will look to offer premium economy on its Airbus A340s. An announcement comes after the first aircraft featuring the new cabin layout returned to service. The process did begin in December, as they look to overhaul the cabin for customers, hoping to improve passenger experience. Swiss confirmed they will see a further three a340-300 have premium economy seats installed with an estimated completion date of April for these ones. The highly positive feedback that we've received from our customers on the greater seating comfort, enhanced service, the wider choice of meals and the quality of food has only strengthened our resolve to offer this top quality product on more of our routes. These are comments coming directly from Swiss's chief commercial officer. A pitch of almost one meter will be available on these seats, and Swiss says it will be bookable on routes from Zurich through to Johannesburg and Hong Kong to Chicago from April. It's worth mentioning this premium economy seat isn't new, having already been installed on their 777-300ER fleet last year following quite a big rollout. Swiss is part of the Lufthansa Group. It has four currently active A340 300s, with one remaining in storage. If you're interested to better understand what aircraft they are intending to welcome on, they still have many aircraft on order, with 11 A320 Neos, 6 A321 Neos, and 5 of the A350 900s, which should eventually replace these A340s. On to our next story, and that's in relation to Qantas, who have had quite a turbulent month now which has seen them experience several incidents that have made headlines worldwide. Now, whether that be with their narrowbody aircraft or potentially their wide bodies going as big as the Airbus A380. QF887, which was meant to be a routine service from Adelaide through to Perth, was forced to turn back while performing its flight. It only made it 45 minutes into the multi-hour journey before it had to return. Per a Qantas spokesperson, the reason was quite an embarrassing one, and it was due to incomplete paperwork. This would not be the first time we've seen something like this happen within the Qantas group in the past couple of weeks, with a similar flight taking place on Jetstar, its main subsidiary, utilising the 787, that actually making it though out of Australia and having to turn back to Melbourne Airport due to paperwork not being completed correctly. While this is not a technical issue with the plane, this is down to staff releasing the aircraft before completing the relative paperwork and is an embarrassing mistake. Technical problems, however, have been plaguing Qantas planes in recent weeks. You can check out articles on the DJ's Aviation website, that's djsaviation.net, to take a look at what has been taking place. But it has been a notable mayday calls, issues with engines, and much more. After landing in Adelaide, the flight was eventually cleared to fly onwards to Perth. By the time it touched down on the capital of the West Coast, it was four hours after it was initially scheduled to land. Qantas firmly reiterated that despite a significant sequence of events with their flights, there are no issues at the company, citing that such things happen at airlines globally and it's to be expected. And while they are completely true with that, it's been a rather unfortunate run of incidents, that have happened, you could say, in pretty close proximity to one another. Virgin Atlantic has revealed its fourth Airbus A330neo with the registration G-VEII will be handed to the name the Queen of the Skies. This is a tribute to the late Queen Elizabeth II, who passed away in 2022. Virgin Atlantic has been known to give names to their aircraft, typically naming the types after influential people. Just like Queen Elizabeth during her historic 70-year reign, Virgin Atlantic says they're proud to fly the flag for the UK and around the world, comments made by the Chief Customer and Operations Officer at Virgin Atlantic. The tribute has seen on social media some express their discontent with naming an A330neo the Queen of the Skies. Given that that title is typically reserved for the Boeing 747, a type that has also been removed from the Virgin Atlantic, 
Atlantic fleet. At Virgin Atlantic, they said that they wanted to replicate what Queen Elizabeth did for the country during her reign, genuinely looking to fly the flag and be the choice for the people. Hence, naming the aircraft in such a manner is symbolic of the direction the airline wants to head. In addition to them, well, they believe it's a fitting tribute to someone who played such an important role. The Airbus A330neo is part of Virgin Atlantic's fleet overhaul, including the A350-1000 and Boeing 787s. These A330neos will play a role in replacing the existing A330-300s. Meanwhile, we've already seen older types like that of the A340 and the 747, become distant memories, having now departed the fleet, with the airline truly moving forward with far more fuel-efficient types. Our final topic of today covers Norse Atlantic Airways, a low-cost carrier based in Norway that announced a week ago the launch of ticket sales for a new journey from Rome to New York. This will be the fifth European destination that will now be served by the airline from JFK, with Rome being selected. Norse plans to begin operations on the service from the 19th of June, with tickets priced at €239 Euros one way. The flight will depart Rome at 7.30pm and arrive in JFK at 11pm. But worse still, the return leg is scheduled to leave JFK at 1 o'clock in the morning and touches down in Rome at 3.45pm. These are all local to their respective city that I mentioned. The departure time out of JFK has certainly turned the heads of many, believing it's probably not the most optimal timing for the airline to be leaving the city from. We are very pleased to announce Rome as our fifth capital city in Europe, offering a direct North Atlantic Airways flight to New York JFK. Customers on both sides of the Atlantic will be able to enjoy value, excellent onboard service, and comfort while traveling between these two culturally vibrant and exciting cities. The addition of Rome to our network will provide another gateway to Europe and strengthen our presence in New York. These are comments from the CEO of Norse Atlantic Airways. Norse currently operates an exclusive fleet of Boeing 787s. According to Sirium data, the airline has five within its fleet. Questions have long surrounded Norse's performances and long-term sustainability as they reject claims that they're Norwegian 2.0. They do, though, undoubtedly follow a very similar model to the carrier that once was operating these long-haul services, from down to their fleet of aircraft being exclusively the Boeing 787 to recent route announcements. However, one of the biggest difference between Norwegian and Norse is when everything went wrong for Norwegian, they had domestic and narrow-body operations operations to fall back on. Norse is strictly a full long-haul airline and also low cost. They only have the Boeing 787 and have announced absolutely no plans to acquire smaller planes. That means it really is go big or go home, and the winter period where they have seen demand drop has been a very crucial one, as they attempt to secure additional funding through potentially contracting out their aircraft on leases and doing charter operations. That's going to conclude today's Aviation News Recap. If you have any thoughts, please do let me know down below in the comments. Thanks so much for your support channel-wide, and I will see you next time. Oh,